All right, so James and Free Will. Now, Free Will is, I would say, probably in like the top five big questions that people associate with philosophy. Um, but it's not necessarily obvious exactly what's going on with this debate. And since we haven't gotten it before, uh, I'm going to give you a little bit of background information before I tell you how James applies pragmatism to it. So, free will is about personal freedom, but this is different from the kind of freedom when you talk about governmental restrictions of behavior. That's a different sort of freedom, still important and we're talking about. Uh, it's also different from talking about uh, being capable of making our own choices in the sense of uh, not being deceived or uh, something like that. So what free will means is, uh, for philosophers in this sort of debate about free will, is the ability to make your own decisions without having any, uh, I don't know, regulation from the physical world. So that was probably a very confusing way to explain it. So here's what I mean. <clears throat> There are people who do not believe that free will is possible. Maybe it'll be easy to go in from this side. Determinism. You have uh, a little sidebar definition of this, I think, in this chapter. So determinists believe that every action that we make, everything that happens in the world is predetermined, which is why it's determinism. It's already been determined. Now, this is something that goes back to Newton's classic mechanics, which tells us that if we know about a physical system at an earlier state and we know what fundamental physical laws govern it that the future state of that physical system is fixed meaning that we can predict it so if i hold this up and we're all aware that this is a pen and it has weight and we're aware of what gravity is and we're aware that i'm about to let go of it we can predict that this pen is going to fall right because we understand the physical, fundamental physical laws that govern this sort of an object. So we can predict that it's going to fall because we're aware of what happens around this physical system when certain things happen. So the idea is, well, we're just physical systems too, albeit a lot more complex than a pen, but we're governed by the same fundamental physical laws on the internal sort of biological cellular level, molecular level, uh, as well as with all the same external uh, fundamental physical laws that are governing us. So the same things apply to us. So if there was someone or something that had the ability to know everything about you, everything that had happened to you in the past, everything about your makeup and your sort of design, they would be able to accurately predict what choices you were going to make in the future. Now, obviously, there's nobody or anything that has the calculating power and just the sheer amount of information to actually be able to do this. Maybe some sort of supercomputer in the future or something could be able to. Uh, some people maybe say that God does. We'll get back to how God connects to free will in a second here. Um, but obviously this isn't something that people can actually do. But the thought is that it's all really just determined. Now we might think that we have free will, but we really don't. And it is definitely true that everybody feels instinctually like they have the freedom to decide. So a better way to define free will is the ability to have chosen otherwise. So I have a mug of coffee here. It's a Star Trek mug. I'm a big fan of the original series in particular. Uh, so I have this mug. I have a ridiculous collection of coffee mugs that people have given me over the years, and I chose my Star Trek mug today. I don't know, I just felt like it. Now, I feel like I could have just as freely chosen any other mug that I happen to own, and I could have chosen not to get coffee, and I could have gotten tea or something like that. But, if determinism is true, I was always going to choose the Star Trek mug, and I was always going to fill it with coffee. And I feel like I could have gotten a yellow mug of tea, but I really couldn't have, right? It was already predetermined I was going to pick this. 
Now, being predetermined doesn't mean that, like, somebody's forcing you to choose that. It just means that if you look at all of the factors and everything that has happened up until this point in your life, everything that's happening now, all that is going to affect all these choices. And if somebody knew enough and had enough calculating power, they could have predicted what I was going to choose. And if you're like me, you might say, oh, well, if somebody had predicted I would have picked this cup, I would have just picked a different cup and I would have not had coffee, I would have had tea. But the idea is that that would have already been factored into the prediction. Like they, it, they would have already known that you were going to rebel and choose the, the opposite of what they thought you were going to choose. That would have already been factored in. Now, it sure feels like we have free will, but uh, determinism really calls that into question. So we like to think that our life is like some blank canvas and that we can paint it however we want, right? With big choices and little choices. I mean, whether you're talking about what you're majoring in, who you're going to marry, where you're going to live, right? I mean, all the big choices plus all the little, you know, what coffee mug, where are you going to go out tonight, what are you going to have for dinner kind of choices. But if determinism is correct, then that's all just fantasy. And we don't really have the power to make those choices in the way that we thought we did. And there are different versions of determinism. Determinism is really popular among, among some philosophers, not all, but uh, also among a lot of people in the sciences, physicists and stuff in particular, uh, because they view the world in a much, they're much more comfortable viewing the world in a much more mechanistic kind of manner, I think, than uh, maybe the average citizen is. So we have other varying levels here. So you might hear in like psychology or something that a lot of our behavior is sort of predetermined, not necessarily by the fundamental physical laws in the universe that govern all physical systems, like determinism would say but instead by choices that we've made before and our circumstances. So if you have a parent who is an alcoholic, then that maybe is going to affect whether or not you become an alcoholic or whether you find a life mate who's an alcoholic or whatever the case is. Now, obviously, we can overcome those sorts of tendencies, but even there we get this little bit of an idea that a lot of our choices are really determined by things that have happened before and not necessarily just us freely choosing it in the way that we maybe think that we do. A lot of it influences us. <clears throat> and then there's fatalism, right, which is one of the things in the tender, tough-minded distinction. Now, fatalism is where, like, the fate thing comes in. So uh, I know fatal is, like, a word that means death, but fatalism is much more about fate. <laughs> so this is the idea that if something is supposed to happen, it's just going to happen no matter what you do to try to fix it, right? Now, there's not a lot of philosophers that are fatalists because it is impossible to explain how that even would work. So where does this come from? What is it? Is it attached to some sort of religious god or goddess? Is it some force in the universe? And if so, what does that mean? Uh, what is it that like determines that these things are going to happen and then causes them to happen? And why does fate only apply to things like your future, you know, life partner or you getting that perfect job, right? I mean, nobody ever says something like, oh, I got coffee today. It was fate. <laughs> and that'd be really weird. Um, and yet fatalism is... Uh, kind of a popular viewpoint for a lot of people, even though it's kind of impossible to explain what exactly that would be or how exactly that would work or why we wouldn't be able to overcome it, right? This is like Final Destination, basically, if you've ever seen those movies. <coughs> it's a very good explanation of fatalism, like this belief that stuff is just going to happen and if you try to stop it, it's just going to happen anyways because it was just meant to be or something. So you're not going to get a whole lot of philosophers on that camp, but that certainly is a viewpoint. So then there are a lot of people that try to make these two things compatible, free will and determinism, and to say, okay, yes, I think that the evidence of us living in a determined world with set fundamental physical laws that govern these physical systems and were physical systems, and I think that that's pretty convincing, but I can't really give up that we have free will, and so then they try to make them fit together somehow. And there's a lot of different ways philosophers have tried to do this. It's called compatibilism. 
and it's just trying to make these two things compatible and it's none of them are really like slam dunk successful but a lot of people have tried and so if you're interested in that you can certainly I recommend looking something like that up on the Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy Google SEP and it'll come up one of the first things so then there's I'm going to introduce the whole God thing just briefly here uh so theological fatalism this is the idea that if God, and we're just speaking of the traditional conception of the Judeo-Christian Islamic God here. So if God is all knowing, right, which is a typical characteristic of this God, it, not everybody's going to share it. But if you look at the majority of people who believe in this same God and what their conception is, that's one of the factors. So if God is all knowing, then God knows everything that I'm going to choose before I choose it. So let's say that tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. my phone is going to ring. Now, God already knows right now whether I am going to answer the phone, whether I'm going to sleep through it, whether I'm going to send it to voicemail or whatever else. Now, if God already infallibly, meaning like no chance for error, knows that tomorrow at 9 a.m. I am going to answer that phone when it rings, then tomorrow at 9 a.m. I am going to answer that phone when it rings. Now, remember if we're defining free will as the ability to have chosen otherwise, well, if God already infallibly knows what, that I'm going to do that, that I'm going to answer it, I can't choose otherwise. Now, this is not saying God is forcing you to make a decision or controlling your actions or anything. It's a different sort of problem than that. So don't get all up in arms if you're a believer in God and uh, you think that that's what I'm saying. <clears throat> Instead, what it means is if God knows everything that we're going to do, then how do we really have the freedom to choose something else? And this is something that has bothered theologians and religious scholars since the very beginning. So don't think that this is like some blasphemous thing that, you know, figureheads in the religion haven't been concerned about, right? The St. Thomas Aquinas and St. Augustine were like obsessed with this problem, right? Way back in the day and we're really trying to fix it. So you could say that just knowing what you're going to choose doesn't necessarily mean you couldn't. So let's say that I know that my best friend drinks Captain and Coke, right? So... I can predict that when we go to the bar that that's what she's going to get, right? And simply because she does get it, it doesn't mean that she couldn't have decided to get beer or a glass of wine or maybe just Coke or something like that. So me knowing ahead of time what she's going to pick doesn't mean that she's not free to pick it. But here's the difference between me and God. There are a lot of them, but uh, God's never going to be wrong. I could be, right? There's zero margin for error with God. Now, you could say that God doesn't experience time in the way that we do, and so God knowing something, you know, isn't past, present, future prediction kind of a thing. But that doesn't really fix the problem, because then you're still faced with this idea of, okay, well, if God knows timelessly that I'm going to do this, then I have no other options, and I'm going to do that. <clears throat> now, this has even more serious consequences if you start to follow the chain, because then you start wondering about things like, okay, God is you know, creating, if you believe in this conception of God, creating people that are definitely going to go to hell, right? And knowing ahead of time that they're going to choose, right, to not do what they need to do to get to heaven, right? So that's all can of worms, obviously. Now, there are good reasons for thinking that we need to have free will. Because it, you might just say, well, who cares? I mean, if it feels like I have free will, I have to live like I have free will. So why should I even care if that really is just fake? Well, we blame people and we punish people because they chose to do the wrong thing. But if the serial killer literally couldn't have put the gun down and walked away even if he wanted to, then we need to rethink the way that we punish people. Same thing with praising people. Right? You should be rewarded for sacrificing time to go to school. And if you didn't have any options, then who cares? I'm not going to be proud of you. So James is going to step in and say, well, what is practical here? Let's use pragmatism. Well, clearly it's a lot more useful for me to believe that I have free will than to believe that I don't. And we have the will to believe whatever we want. 